Hello everyone, welcome to Good Journeys Tarot, I'm Rosemary, and today we're going to be talking about the anthropomorphizing of robots. So, why am I talking about this? Well, I was on Kickstarter and I saw a deck that really appealed to me, and I was trying to figure out why, and then I realized that it reminded me of this print that I have. Um, this was actually done in like an hour, I think it was, at a... Um, a fundraiser by a friend who is an artist, Michael Balsarik of Aradani Studios, and um, I just thought it was really interesting, the robot holding the flower in front of all the rubble behind him, and uh, it was touching. And so, um, he actually, the next year, did a prequel to this in which it was what the robot was thinking about. Um, as he held the flower. And it was actually um, a father and son uh, robots, uh, the father holding the son on his shoulders, and the son was supposedly this one um, before the disaster that's left everything in rubble. So, um, and then I thought some more about it, and some of my favorite movies and television also anthropomorphize robots. So, like Futurama, which is one of my all-time favorite series, and then you've got uh, Robots with Robin Williams, which is an animated movie. And then I, Robot was actually one of my favorite movies, though I don't think everybody enjoyed it with Will Smith. Um, and so when I saw this deck, I had to grab it. So this is called Terrobot. And basically it is mostly an RWS clone. Uh, but um, there are some cards that are different than the traditional imagery, um, but it features robots behaving as humans, and so I really like that about it. Um, it isn't a tuck box. Tuck boxes don't hold up very well. I mean, even in shipment, this one's already got some, some dents and whatnot on it. Um, so I probably will get a 10 from Make Playing Cards to put this deck in, because I just feel like the robots belong in a metal 10. I think that'll be... Um, great. Um, it just, because it's mostly a Rider Waite clone, it does just come with a little white um, fold out with key words. Um, and it's actually pretty nice. I love the feel of this. It's like um, that matte rose petally kind of feel to it. But um, I actually did the uh, backing level, which got me prints of some of the cards. And so, um, the prints that I received were the devil, uh, sorry, death, <laughs> um, the high priestess, and the fool. Um, and I have ordered frames to hang these with this print by Michael um, in, on the wall together so all of my robots will be in one place. Um, it has a really cool back uh, which is gold foiled and the black I don't think it comes across here but the black actually has um, a pattern in it as well. The other really cool thing is that it did come uh, gilded. Um, it is a glossy deck so it, it is a little shiny um, but I think that's okay for this particular type of artwork and for the fact that it's robots, I, I think that's okay. Um, I don't think I would want it to be a matte finish for this particular, these particular cards. Um, so I was really excited about this and I'm looking forward to flipping through this for you right now. Uh, give me a moment while I flip the camera around. There's a fool. To me, the Empress and the Emperor are pretty, but they don't really speak to the... The image doesn't add much to the recognition of the card. So, like, the Hierophant actually has the staff, which we're used to seeing, and the two um, students learning from the Master. Um, but some of the symbology was missing from the Emperor and Empress. Lovers, Chariot, Strength, and 
you'll see in some of these cards there was a lot of imagery kept from the RWS and in some of the cards there's a lot of imagery that was left off but I love this imagery it's really cool um, the colors the vibrancy love this death card Let's double pulling the strings this is interesting in this tower there are actually no robots or humans as it were falling from the tower and there are a couple of cards that typically have people in them that don't and i'll point those out There's the star um, the moon, um, having it on the tower like that kind of adds to the idea that the moon is a little bit about illusion or deception. Sun. So it's interesting that here you'll see he kept the uh, four elements uh, from the um, world card in the RWS. So see, here's one where it's not exactly the imagery from the RWS, but it's still the same idea. But then you get one like this that's almost verbatim the uh, what you get with the RWS. I like this idea that the swords are all in the head. Um, because, the, of course, swords relate to the intellect, and so I think it's that, you know, overwhelming of thought that um, is really just dragging us down. The page. The knight. Queen. And the king. Now we're at our wands. So this is an interesting take. It's different than the RWS. Um, kind of staring into a crystal ball kind of thing. Or his reflection. I don't know. Looking at the future. So here's one of the ones I was mentioning where typically you would see people. Um, or in the case of this deck, robots. But it's actually just the four wands in front of, you know, this tower. Um... So I'm not sure, you know, what that choice was about, but, um, you know, a little different. But the, this one's very much the same. Oh, one of the things that I forgot to point out when we were going through the Major Arcana is, is that Justice is blind in this deck. Um, that's actually something that I really enjoy in decks. I like for Justice to be blindfolded, um, as well as has, have her sword and her um, scales. Uh, we got the little black cat. It's a robot cat um, in her Queen of Wands. And there's a little robot salamander in the uh, King of Wands. There's our cup, which is powered by a rocket. Um, yeah, the two of cups. Very much RWS. Again, three cups. This four is a little bit of a different take. He's actually got uh, the fourth cup in his hand, and his the other three cups are on the ground. Was it five of cups? Seven, very much similar to the RWS, with little different items in the cups. The Eight of Cups. So this is a little bit of a different take um, on a Ten of Cups, I suppose. Usually you've got the rainbow with the family dancing under it. The page. 
night. Oh, I had those out of order. King, in fact, when I got them, they were in a weird order, and I don't know if that was intentional or just printing, um, but I noticed they're that way on the PDF file of the deck as well. Um, it went two through ten, and then it was ace, um, knight, page, king, queen, or something like that. It, it wasn't in, in this order. I actually put it in order. I love this Ace of Coins. The Ace of Coins is a card that I think almost every tarot deck gets right for some reason. They just, they, they usually um, really do a great job making that stand out to me. Two, three, four, five. So you do see the robot huddled over, but he's not like outside front of a of um a church or anything like that. It's just out in the open. Um, oh, the six of coins. So this is one where there's definitely a difference between the RWS and this. You know, usually um you look at this card and you kind of get a feeling of giving and receiving, but here it's it's pretty much all about the giving. <laughs> I guess that to some extent you could say they're receiving as well because there's someone down below probably. Um, but yeah, this is like, let's dive bomb them with free money. Um, <laughs> anybody else would like that? I, I think that would be great. Um, so eight, nine with her little robot bird. Um, the Ten of Coins here again is another one where you usually see a group of people um, that they kind of left that out. And I guess this is supposed to be, you know, speaking to, you know, a, a home, you know, a, a um, yeah, okay. page, the night on the robot elephants. There's our Queen of Coins, our King of Coins. Now, there are four extra cards in this deck, um, and you could use them or not use them. I, I looked at them, and I think that the ideas behind these cards are captured in other cards in the deck, so I might not use them, although one of them I really, really just want to use. Um, this is the Elder, and then you have the Pit. I, I love this. I, I, I really just feel compelled to use this in my deck because you know, despair. <laughs> I know that we probably could use the Ten of Swords for that, but still, this is, this is really cool, and I, 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 I like that image. Um, there's the Anarchist, and finally, there is the Con Man, which is actually on the front of the little, the little booklet for it, so. So that is Terry Bot. Let's give it a shuffle and see what it looks like, how it shuffles. It's actually not a real thick um, um, stock, but um, it's thick enough, I think, that it'll be sturdy and I won't damage it too much. Um, I am a ruffle shuffler. Um, I, I just have never been able to get the overhand thing to work for me. Um, it does shuffle very nicely. So why don't we pull a card? And we got oh, the Nine of Cups. You know, for a long time, this was the card in the tarot that I just most wanted to relate to. That feeling of, you know, luxury and having it all and um, whatnot. So um, I, I'm i hoping that I'm headed towards a better place given this pandemic. Um, you know, I've been slack on posting videos. And part of that was because I was using my home office to work from home. So I didn't really feel like being in here on the weekends doing stuff because I was in here all day, every day. Um, so this week I finally decided to move my work computer to my dining table, which I never use. Um, it actually is at a better height for me for working at all day um, and a little bit more comfortable because it's downstairs where it's cooler. Um, and so I'm hoping that having moved my work out of my tarot space that I'll be uh, getting back into doing videos. I actually have several planned at the moment 
Um, I thought I might shoot them all this weekend, um, but I kind of want to relax. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, good journeys.